Want to know what I'm going to do with some fabric and some corn cob? Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney. Today I've got another round of fall DIYs and you're going to want to make sure to stay through till the end because while you're watching the video, you may not quite pick up on it, but one of the DIYs has actually earned a place on my DIY shelf of shame. And it's gonna be sitting next to that good old mange tree. So stay tuned and let's get crafting. To kick off this DIY, you are gonna need this template. Now, I just kind of sketched this out. I will put this free template linked down below in the description box along with everything else I'm using today. I printed mine out on cardstock because I did want it to be a little bit sturdy. Once I got the template cut out, you're gonna need some fabric. Now, you can do green fabric, you can do red fabric, you could even do yellow fabric, but I ended up picking kind of three different shades or three different patterns of green as well as red. Now it's time to cut the fabric. Now I did end up getting three eighths of a yard of each of these fabrics. It was way more than I needed, but I actually have a Christmas DIY in mind. So I'm kind of getting dual uh, projects out of this fabric. So for this, I decided um, the three eighths worked out great, at least width wise to just cut these strips. And I was able to get two slices cut per strip of fabric. So what you've ended up with now is you have six pieces for the green apple with the green fabric and then six pieces for the red apple. You want to start by gluing your pieces together. I'm doing them in a pattern and you want to glue pattern side to pattern side. So kind of like inside out. Yeah, inside out, I guess. And you wanna start at the top of the skinny portion of the slice. And as you go down, you wanna glue, but not glue all the way down to the tip because what will happen is then it'll be all closed up and you won't be able to stuff it very easily. So you're gonna continue um, once you add a slice then you take the next slice and just do them again back to back. I'll kinda of let you watch, but if you have more questions about it, just ask me down below in the comments and I'll be happy to get back to you. Now you wanna grab a styrofoam ball. I had this leftover from a Christmas craft. Well, I say it's leftover. It was a Christmas craft I didn't get to last year, but I'm gonna to get to it this year. And you wanna poke a hole in that styrofoam ball and then take your little poof and the pointy section, the skinny section, well, the one that's closed up. That's pretty simple, I guess. <laughs> the one that's closed up. You wanna take some hot glue, shove it in that styrofoam ball and go ahead and shove that little um, apple carcass, because that's what it is at this point, um, into that hole. Sorry, y'all. And then wrap it around the styrofoam ball. Now, before I start putting the fluff in there, I did cinch up a few more of the pieces up here on top, and then I stuffed it with fluff that I just used from an old pillow. Fun fact, this red apple actually was the second apple I made, and the first one, the green one, the top of that one turned out perfect, but actually I didn't film it because I was trying to figure out what to do. So this is where you're gonna need that stick. If you follow me on Instagram, I said grab sticks. Um, this is where you want that. You can shove that straight into that styrofoam ball and it'll help. You're also gonna want some push pins to help 
push down that red fabric. Honestly, the top of this one looks like a hot mess. The green one looked great, but it doesn't matter because you're not gonna be able to see that. So don't worry about it if you can't get it looking all snazzy up there, it's all good. Now your next step is to add the caramel and the, I guess, um, nuts. So for the caramel, all I did was take some Mod Podge and some caramel colored paint by Apple Barrel. I would recommend using the fabric Mod Podge if it were me, but I'd use the glossy and it worked fine. And then this is just that corn cob bedding that you can get for hamsters. I just got a huge bag of it on Amazon for 10 bucks. I'll link it down below, but if you have friends with little pets, you might be able to get it. So for this one, I drizzled from the top and like I said, it covered up the top. So it's okay if your top was a hot mess on this one. And then kind of let me show you what I did with the green apple. For the green, you're gonna go through the exact same steps to assemble the apple. Like I said, this was actually, as you can see, the red piece is sitting there. This was the first one that I did. But for this one, I covered basically from the bottom kind of up towards the top and just covered it with that caramel mixture, again, which is Mod Podge and the caramel colored paint by Apple apple barrel and I spread that all over the apple and then I just rolled it in the corn cob stuff and then both of them got a little bit of an accent with the burlap ribbon and just kind of finished it off with there you could also add a tag to it if you wanted to maybe stamp the word caramel apple on there totally up to you and again you could make a yellow one but I just think these are a great variation of the plastic caramel apples that you often see Grab yourself a piece of wood from the crafter's square like I did here or if you have a scrap piece of wood whatever will work and a pencil and you want to sketch out a pumpkin now I am not an artist by any means as you will be able to see when I draw this pumpkin but I try the main thing here is when you sketch it out um, you're gonna be going in with some paints and we're gonna add a kind of a 3d element to this you want to be able to see those lines just because well you'll see here in just a minute so get your pumpkin sketched out and then we'll start adding some color Now, a couple different options here. I'm gonna be using a brown wax. You can grab a brown stain or even some brown paint that you water down. You don't want it super heavy brown paint though. And you wanna cover this whole thing with the brown except where the orange part of the pumpkin's gonna be. The stem, you'll go in with a, that brown color as well. But again, try to keep where the orange pumpkin's gonna be that natural color. grab some orange paint. I am using the pumpkin paint by Waverly and paint the pumpkin orange. Now you need to grab either some twine, which is what I will be using, but you can also use yarn for this next part. I am taking a lighter in burning off some of those hairs, but you know what I always say, keep water, fire extinguisher, don't do this if you're afraid of fire. I just don't want it to be a hairy pumpkin. So once I get that done, then we're ready to start attaching the twine. And what we're doing is once that orange paint dried, you can actually still see the pencil lines on your pumpkin. So you're just gonna take some hot glue, and this is where the detail tip, Sherbonner glue gun, 
one like is the best because you can get just the littlest amount of glue and you're going to put hot glue along those lines also putting the twine on those lines so that if eventually when it's all finished the pumpkin will be outlined with the twine The last step here is optional. You, I thought maybe I wanted to add a little bit of florals to it, but in the end I decided I just wanted to leave it plain. You could add the word fall or wood burn the word fall. That would be really nice as well. But this is the perfect size for a tear tray or even just to add somewhere with your fall decor. And now for this one, you guys loved that s'mores coffee that I made. So I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna do a pumpkin one right now. I'm gonna do an apple cider version. So I'm gonna be using this paint by Apple Barrel in the color Golden Sunset. This mug is just from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna go in and paint the inside of the mug with the paint. While the mug dries, I grabbed a pack of these wooden apples from Dollar Tree, grabbed one out and painted it. I grabbed two different shades of red and wasn't quite sure. The first one I used was called Cranberry and I wasn't really digging the color. So I added a little bit of a darker red, which was country red. And I painted the stem brown on there and got it all coated with the paint. With the mug all dry, I grabbed it and put it on a piece of Dollar Tree foam board and traced around the top of the mug and cut that out with my hobby knife. Then I'm doing the same process that I did for that s'mores coffee one. If you didn't see that one video, I will link it down below. That one turned out so cute with the little mini marshmallows and everything. But for this one, I'm gonna go through the same process using a piping bag, the little tips from Dollar Tree. This is the caulk that, our, I'm sorry, the spackle that I love to use. From, I mean, it literally looks like whipped cream. I pipe that on top of the foam board to, to where I got it how I liked it and then I added some faux sprinkles to it and then for the caramel sauce I just took the caramel colored paint and drizzled it now if you want it to be a little more thick and actually look like caramel you're gonna want to go in and add some of that Mod Podge thicken it up but for me I didn't really mind it being kind of drippy and droopy and then once I got that done I was ready to kind of finish off the mug To finish this off, I took a piece of burlap ribbon that I cut in half. This was actually an afterthought. So I probably would recommend before you hot glue your topper to the top of the cup that you maybe put the burlap ribbon on first, but I got it on there, I hot glued that down. And then I added a little fall floral flower that I kind of added some leaves and glued that to the top of the handle. And the last step was just to take a cardboard uh, tag that I had and I just wrote apple cider on there, hot glued that in there. And then this little thing was ready to go. Y'all, come on, this isn't an apple. Be real, come on, comment down below. Does this look like an apple? No, it doesn't look like an apple, Courtney. This looks like a tomato. This looks like a tomato that's got a bunch of weird stuff on top of it, a tomato on a stick. And because of that, it is now, for those of you who know and love the mange tree, the DIY shelf of shame. Candied tomatoes, y'all. 
It's the new trend. And there you go, another round of Dollar Tree DIYs. Let me know down below which one of these was your favorite. Also let me know, have you ever made caramel apples before? I've never actually made them, but I'm thinking about maybe doing them this year. If you have, I'd love to know what kind you make, what all you put on them, or if you don't do the caramel apple thing, do you do the apple cider thing? And if so, do you have a good recipe? Because I would love to have it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Here are some more videos that you might enjoy, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.